have a leftover praise in the house? How about a leftover hallelujah? Thank you, Bishop Sherrod, for your allowing the Lord to lead you into meaningful worship. We're so grateful tonight to be here with our brothers and sisters from across the length and breadth of the United States and other parts of our great world. Let me subscribe to the established protocol before I commence my uh, greetings and salutations to our great leader of the Church of God in Christ, Bishop Charles Edward Blake and those persons whom history has orchestrated to serve in the capacity as first and second assistants presiding bishops and to the board of bishops and of course those other leadership groups supervisor general supervisor mother lewis and the members of her cabinet whom God has so orchestrated to serve with her during this juncture of our uh, chronological and ecclesiastical histories. What a joy it is tonight to be here in this place with some of the best people in the world. We are members of the royal family have been conscripted into divine service for such a time as this. And so I'm grateful for this opportunity and this coveted position, which I now enjoy. To tender greetings to the members of this universal family. I want to acknowledge the members of the Judiciary Board with whom I serve. And I would ask that they would please stand and, and I want to recognize them individually. Judge Enoch Perry, who serves as the Vice Chairperson, Vice Chief Justice. Justice Peter Davis, who serves as our Secretary. And uh, you may sit where I can see who else is in line. Uh, Justice Connor, thank God for you, and Justice Lewis, presiding judge in one of the courts in Chicago, and Justice Saffold, Milwaukee, and Dr. King from that great state of Illinois, and uh, Dr. Diana Banks from the state of Maryland, certainly glad to have you with us this evening, or Ralph Waldo Emerson during a commencement address in 1838 to the graduating class of Harvard Divinity School prefaced his remarks with these words, quote, at first acquaint thyself with deity, end quote. Emerson was of the theological and philosophical persuasion that those persons who would dare engage in this ministry of salvation and reconciliation during which the word of God is preached and the sacraments are administered ought have a contact with him who is our help in ages past and our hope for years to come. What an auspicious time during which we live to sit under the dynamic, creative, and innovative leadership of Bishop Charles Blake, who has allowed God to give him the theme that permeates this convention and, of course, the churches of God and Christ throughout the world. God has entrusted to us unlimited power with which we can utilize that power to literally transform the world in which we live. I would admit that those of us who are fortunate to live during this juncture of history, living during a time when it's 
quite difficult. These are dismal times. These are difficult times. Given the political culture of our society and the economic situations, coupled with academia, faith and reason have run into each other. There are things about our spirituality, as the philosophy says, that are not empirically verifiable. We cannot validate them by the eyes, nor the hands, nor the smelling, nor the hearing, nor the seeing. But nonetheless, in actuality, they are a viable force operating in our world. And God has allowed that to be placed in us. The only member of his creation that diverted from the divine direction. These are dark times. These are dismal moments. These are times that try men's soul. God has called us to the forefront to be his presence in this world. Soren Kierkegaard, the founder of modern existentialism, said that the light shines brightest during darkness. Because these are dark times, why not us allow us? Why don't we allow God to utilize us be reflections of that unlimited power that has the potential of providing light in the midst of darkness. I love the church of God in Christ. I am still convinced without all of the theological and philosophical ramifications that you cannot join it, but you must be born in it. And if I'm able to live until March the 23rd next year, I will celebrate 70 years. And I know I don't look that old, say man. But I'm a proud of my journey. And I feel no waste time. I've come too far. Don't believe he's brought me this far to leave me. I came in this church after having dropped out of school in the fifth grade. Single parent raised me. I went back to school after having a wife and two children. Went back to high school at night. Got my GED. Somebody had faith in me and sent me to a Southern Baptist University. From that on to the Interdenominational Theological Seminary for my master's. University of Texas with a second master's. New York University PhD, and then to law school with a law degree. Help me say God is good. It is not because of my initiative nor smartness, but it was because of the fact that I gave the Lord my life. And I wish the saints of God from all the world would help me say to God, be the glory for the things he has done. My challenge to you is, let's utilize the spiritual resources available to us to transform this world so that the kingdoms of this world can become reflective of the kingdom of God and his Christ. God bless.